everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. You are watching the Bria Jamora Show coming to you live from New York City. It is I, your darling Bria Jamora, and on today's show, I'm talking beauty and brains matched together to show us what it is to be a fine woman in the year 2023 and doing so unapologetically. My next guest, of course, uh, holds the title of Miss Universe Nigeria 20, 2019 and also placed top 20 at the Miss Universe 2019 pageant. She's a real estate agent. She's a model. She's an influencer, an internationally acclaimed speaker, businesswoman, and so much more. She's here, ladies and gents, the one and only Olotase. Are you saying nice? Good job. <laughs> and what an introduction. What an intro it. You Thank deserve you. that introduction. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for coming on the <laughs> show. Oh, man, I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. I remember yeah. seeing you on the Miss Universe stage, and I was oh, just did you watch beaming. Her? Of course I oh, did. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so then you know my girlfriend, Zosie. I do. <laughs> one, of, one of our national treasures in yes. South Africa. Yes. Um, but I really was gleaming of joy seeing you. this, you know, this woman who is brave and beautiful beautiful and is standing up there representing a country in such an elegant way so Thank having you. to sit down with you today and kind of going on that journey again I guess for you as well is kind of reliving that yeah, moment. I mean it's 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 an amazing even me sometimes I think like was that my life <laughs> <laughs> but um I'm so thankful I mean the whole experience was amazing as you know like Zozia was my roommate and she also won Miss Universe and um both of us placed in the top 20 and then obviously she proceeded on but you know if she wins, I win, yes. you know, and it's like that message of like camaraderie and, you know, empowering one another to me was what I wanted to push the most. Mm. And I'm so happy I was able to get that across. Yeah. And I think yeah. you trended a bit for yes. how, <laughs> how you celebrated your sister. I remember that. Oh, I, I, would never forget, no, I literally would never forget that moment. I remember the day after Miss Universe, um, I think Zozie or Zozie's manager um, came up to me and was like, you're trend trending on Twitter. And I'm like, for what? So I was like, so scared I thought I did something I'm like oh my god my whole country is disgraced <laughs> yeah. I was so scared but then no um I think Zosie actually showed me she's like no they're saying like the memes of how you're like go girl walk walk I didn't even realize I did that yeah. until the day after because when people don't realize when you're on stage like it's so many emotions going That's so you right. don't realize certain things until you look back and you're like wait you I didn't even realize I did that the only reason why I did that really was because she was my roommate and we practiced kind of like a protocol of how things are supposed to yes. be. Yes. The girls are all, I guess, overwhelmed with excitement. So we all kind of just, you know, but then I was like, wait, they said she has to walk. So in my mind, I was thinking, you guys are messing up the whole TV. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't realize they were catching all these yeah, things. So yeah. it was it was just such a crazy um, moment, but I'm thankful that it happened. I think it shows like women can empower That's one another. Right. And I think it's especially I think that was at a time where there was like xenophobia going on with Nigeria and, and South Africa. And I feel like um, in a way I, 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 I bring the two countries together. That's it. And to me, um, you know, not winning the crown. That's okay, but this is a bigger lesson, you know. Not everything is about the end goal. Sometimes it's about the, like you know, the process of what's happening in between. And I think we got a, a message across that should be talked about more. That's right, and I love that the mm -hmm. unity of these two girls, right? But they're representing two nations. Yes. And as roommates, but also as friends, as yeah. as camaraderie that yes. we got to see such a beautiful way. And and I'd really like to kind of chat about your journey as Miss, Miss Universe Nigeria 2019. Entering the pageant, what, what was your hopes and goals um, getting into it that you wanted to ensure that I'm going to, I want to achieve these mm -hmm. in my reign? I mean, so like when I went to Miss Universe or competing for Miss Universe Nigeria? Competing for Miss Universe Nigeria specifically, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, so I went in there, so I was really hopeful, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like I was, I was at the age where is, I was going to age out. So I was like, this is it. So I had to really come in there strategic. So I didn't go in there like, okay, like, let me just look pretty. Like, I came in there prepared. I prepared for six months before um, walking, interview, um, current events, you know. And then I was primarily based in America. So I had to move back to Nigeria. So mm -hmm. about two months before the pageant, I moved fully back to Nigeria. I was really immersed in the culture, you know, um, still practicing, still connecting, you know? So it was like, my journey is not like a typical journey where it's just like, well, let me just go for a pageant. Like I literally almost a year before the pageant, I planned it out, you know? Um, and 
through the ups and downs, I was still able to like stay the course and stay focused on my goal and um, winning my title. It, it was an amazing, like I 100% am thankful for that experience because it made me the woman I am today. The connections that I have and even the growth that I have now is because of that experience. And then obviously going on to Miss Universe and um, being the second Nigerian woman to ever place in the history of the pageant. Till this day, only me and Agbani Durango are the two people that ever placed in Miss Universe. And I think that just speaks monuments about like, hopefully where Africa's going, like more queens will step up and get noticed and, and be taken as a force to be reckoned with in pageantry as well. Mm. Yeah. Not only in the pageantry, but in just, in just woman empowerment, yes. in, in, in the concept yes. of that. What would you say was your favorite part about the journey to, be, to, to competing, but also in the, in the process of winning as well, to being then Miss Universe Nigeria? What was your favorite, most fulfilling part about it? Um, I think the most fulfilling part was being able to see out a dream that my mother had for me. Um, my mother passed away four years ago and it was right around the time, um, like my Miss Universe pageant. So it's like, I felt like I was living her dream. And to me, like people, people just see like girls and they don't see the stories behind each girl. Like I, I did this for, to carry on her legacy, you know? So it's like people, people need to look at pageants a little bit more differently and i feel like hopefully i did that like with the time that i had in pageantry i hope people see us girls as like girls who are, are are change makers and are people who are trying to be leaders and granted yes we're beautiful but we have a story to tell and you know obviously you you know the looks can get you in the door but i think your brain gets uh, keeps you there you know so i i really do hope that message is passed upon in pageantry and and other things as well yeah. The, the beauty gets you in the door, but yeah. the brains keep you in there. I absolutely love that. And I think what I'm also taking from this conversation is that the pageantry, the Miss, Miss Nigeria, Miss Universe, those platforms are story, could be seen as storytelling platforms as well because mm -hmm. we, we are watching these girls yes. share with us their journeys, their yes. stories yes. On, on, on these platforms. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a beautiful way to then connect other young women to, to your story. Yes. Um, and I'd love to know from you, what's that one thing, because you were an inspirational fig figure Thank you. by, you know, competing, by also winning, but then going to Miss Universe. So what's that one thing a young girl said to you throughout your reign, um, or even now reflecting black, back about um, how, they, how, you, how you inspired them that has stuck in your heart? I had so many. So it's crazy. I had so many DMs around that time. But I mean, I think one message that always resonated with me was just girls that reached out to me was like, I want to be just like you mm -hmm. or girls that like, because of you, I didn't quit. You know, um, I even have one um, young, young fellow. His name is Alex. He is um, he's the one that actually created my fan page during my Miss Universe time. And even till today, we still connect. And yeah. he was just saying like how like he was bullied and and because of my tenacity and my strength and all that stuff, like. I keep him going and it's like you don't realize the type of connections you're giving to people you know and like even though like my reign ended um, in 2021 I still keep these connections till today mm -hmm. so it's like you know that impact is always everlasting and um, it's, it's just it's amazing that you know you think just one person can't change other people but you really can you really can. I think if you have a, a, a goal and you really stay true to that, you really can change. Um, even if it's, you know, one raindrop is a ripple effect, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I hope I just did my little raindrop and, you know, pass the mantle and keep going on yeah. in my journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Impact is, is, yes. is, is what you are able to do with this rain. Yes. And that's absolutely in, encouraging for many. I'm hoping that, if, you know, young girls watching, young fellows watching as well could be inspired by your journey and yes. um, kind of, you know, take on that mantle and, and continue forward. Yes. Um, now let's, let's go into your Miss Universe time, right? Standing on that stage <laughs> when Steve Harvey called your name. What's the first, what's the first feeling you got? Was it excitement, fear? Yeah, nausea. <laughs> I don't know. So, so Nigeria doesn't really place in this universe. I think it's unfortunate, but it's just the truth. So I don't know. I felt like I knew I was going to place to an extent. Like yeah. 
I don't know, like, if you count, if, if people see a video of when they called me, I kind of, like, clapped my hand, was like, yes. Because I already knew, I, like, and it's crazy because a lot of people are like, oh, please, she's not placing, or, oh, they're only going to call South Africa, that's it. And, then, and I was like, you guys don't know who I am. So, <laughs> so I, when they called me, everybody was like, oh, this is a shocker. I was like, for what? Why? Yeah, Why is this shocking? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. I, just as much as Miss Philippines or Miss Venezuela or Miss, Miss South Africa or Miss USA, I deserve to be there. I have a story to tell, and it's not because I'm representing um, a country that doesn't place that much. It's because of who I am. You know, mm -hmm. people need to realize that each girl, we all have our different stories. And it's, it's, um, it's an amazing platform to be able to, you know, come forward on. So I don't know. I was very excited and I kind of was ready and I was just was like, oh, hey, Steve, what's up? Let's talk. <laughs> and I love what you said when the first thing you said is like, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes, because I, like, I am. Yes. I am. I am blessed and highly favored. I'm nothing without God. And, um, you know, I just, I'm happy to be honest, even though obviously I will, I was, I only made the top 20. So I was only on TV for like maybe about maybe two, three, four minutes or so. But I feel like in that small amount of time, I was able to do things, whether mm. it's the empowerment I did, what I spoke about my country, um, you know, showing about my faith. Those key points to me are the most important things. And it showed on an yes. international platform. Yes. So to me, like I did what I wanted to do, you know, and you know, you move on to the next chapter. I am blessed and highly favored. Yes. That's what's <laughs> up. Now, you know, from what I'm getting, there's a level and a sense of unapologeticness that you have. You're For sure. brave and you know exactly who you are. Yeah. <laughs> and um, from that, right, you, you shared with us how your mom was a very influential part yes. of you competing yes. um, in this in this journey of Miss, Miss Universe Nigeria, but also... Could you share with us about how her, how the, how what impact she had on your life? Yeah, that has instilled that bravery, that unapologeticness yeah. in you today. I mean, for sure, my mom would always say I'm a mini version of her, and I feel like literally I am. Like you know, um, I saw a quote somewhere. They said it's not what your parents leave to you; it's what they leave in you. And um, now that I'm like continuing the journey without her physical presence, I realize that it's a hundred percent true. Like what like the doctrines and the things that she taught me are things that I'm doing now in my life and even when I'm going through like hard scenarios you know my mom was a reverend as well so she you know honed on to God so much and it's like I do the same thing as well mm -hmm. so it's like you know I think parents really are like having a good parent is essential not not even a oh possible it's an essential and men you need to really be like mindful of who you're procreating with because I feel like nowadays, especially with the social media area, everybody is just like, oh, you know, I just need a hot girl. Hot girl is great, but you need to realize that her mind is raising your child. Her mind is raising the next generation. You have to really think about these things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like beauty is one thing, but I think beauty with a purpose to me is the most important thing. So it's like these little nuggets that my mom left in me are just things that I'm like living. Like people are usually so surprised that I'm like so articulate, so well-spoken and stuff. But it's like, this is because of my upbringing. This is because of her influence. And it's like, now I'm carrying the mantle. And then when I have my own tr children, I know what to do with them because I already have kind of like the blueprint. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, it's essential to like, you know, make, like, make sure you're being a good role model to your, the people around you. And then also, obviously, you know, children cher cherish your parents because they're not here forever. So it's like the time you have with them. Really learn as much you can, learn as much as you can, so you can continue their legacy. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure she's so proud of you. Oh, I know she is. Oh, I know. Like I, I know my mom. She's literally. She was like, ah, oh, don't let me cry, girl. My mom was like, literally. She was such a cheerleader for me. So it's like, it sucks that she's not physically here, but. Um, but I know she's in heaven. I know she's happy for me. And it's not even happy for me. It's happy for us. Because yeah. she really, she made me who I am. Like, I am, oh, girl, don't make me cry. Uh, do you have a napkin or something? No. It's okay. Um, anyway, I know who, she made me who I am, 100%. And it's like, um, I just wish she was here longer to, to really get the, I guess, the, the, the greatness of what I'm doing now and she, able to see it. But, um. I know she's on the other side, like, so proud of me. So let's move to happier things, though. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sure she is resting 
an eternal heavenly peace. Thank, Thank you, you yes. for sharing that. With You're us. welcome, um, ladies and gents. We, um, I am Thank so so inspired by you, you and by your strength and by your journey. We Thank will you. go to a quick commercial break and we will come back and chat um, on the the next steps. What's what's in the future? Yes, we'll be back <laughs> straight after this. We are back, ladies and gents, from all around the world. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. This is the Rio Jamoto Show, and I have a very special guest for you today. On the show, we were chatting about such an incredible conversation before the ad break, and now we're going to be continuing um, because this incredible, gorgeous <laughs> queen next to me is one of New York's finest real estate agents. Mm -hmm. And we are obviously looking to to and not, to learn more. I just yes. want to know more. I just want to mm -hmm. know more. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Olotusin, tell me more. Um, what drew you to the real estate space? Because it's different to pageantry. Oh, sure. 100% <laughs> different. But, you know, I'm not going to lie. I feel like the skills that I learned in pageantry, I kind of took it with, to real estate. Uh, so I actually just fully got licensed May of 2023 and I started working with Compass, um, number one brokerage in all of America. Oh, you know, we got to huh? work with the best. That's right. <laughs> um, so I'm a part of the LGF Fairmont um, group. It's a team where they really like are able to train agents to really work in the Manhattan space, you know, being able to like conduct your own business by yourself, but still representing obviously the brand. Um, so with real estate, honestly, like I see myself doing like, well, I actually possibly might have like a big portfolio that I'm a um, client that I may be uh, working with in the future. Um, currently, I just closed a couple of lease deals. Um, where I see my trajectory going is definitely foreign investors, um, luxury, high end, um, you know, maybe selling sunset kind of look, you know, but in NYC. That's right. <laughs> Um, and then all my connections that I've gotten from pageantry, modeling, and, you know, just even just being in the city itself, like I'm trying to hone all that in to bring me into this new field. Um, with real estate, you know, it's, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. Like it's something that I thought like, oh, I'll just be showing houses and looking pretty. But it's literally like you're building a business from scratch, like literally. So it's like you're making your own income. But I don't know. I have like an entrepreneurship spirit. So to me, like. It's kind of what I know I'll be good at, you know, with the right resources and the right determination. I know I'll do great and I'm already doing great. So I'm really thankful for this new career new path. Career path. Yeah. And what are those what are those practical skills? Right. I, I know in pageantry, speaking, yes. articulating. Yes. Um, what else would you say you kind of have taken from the pageantry industry? in a practical capacity on are using now? I mean, definitely my speaking skills. I feel like I used to be so scared to speak in front of people, but it's like, especially when you're working with big clients with millions of dollars invested in real estate, you have to know how to speak the lingo. So it's like that skill from pageantry of speaking, I'm able to use that here. Um, marketing as well. Like you have to really be able to push your own business, market, meet new people. Um, like I went to a charity um, gala two, two nights ago and literally like um, people, oh my God, you look like a model, you know? So it's like, when I start talking about real estate, they're kind of like, okay, what's going on here? So it's like, I feel like, you know, my appearance is like so inviting. And then yeah. when they really talk to me, they're like, oh, this girl got something going on. So, um, so I guess obviously the marketing skills and that, what's the last skill? I would say people skills. Mm. I learned because like pageantry, you're dealing with people, real estate, you're dealing with people. That's so right. it's like, I learned great people skills because it's like, especially with some clients, you have easy clients that are like just, you know, one, two, three, and it's done. And then you have some other clients that are like very stressful, you know? Um, so it's like, I'm able to learn like time management skills and um, different skills that I feel like I kind of learned in pageantry. I t I, I'm using it in, in real estate and then um, kind of just capitalizing on that. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. And for, for, for anyone who might be watching and is considering tapping into being one of your clients, oh, yes. what would you say <laughs> is the offering that you present that's different to any other real estate agent in the I mean, New York City? I mean, I feel like so many people do real estate in the city, but for me, I mean, anything I do, I do with a passion. So it's like, I don't just look at it as me just getting somebody an apartment or a luxury home or an investment property. I look at it as how can I ease their stress? Mm -hmm. And then I also look at it as I'm doing it for myself, you know, because I feel like some agents just put you in the door and they're like, okay, bye. 
that's not what I do. I literally give you a personalized experience, you know, where you can count on me no matter what. Um, even there's agents, I mean, there's clients that I've closed that I still talk to because I don't want you to think, okay, I got my commission. Goodbye. No, it, this is my life. So I want you to feel like, you know what? I have a friend in me. I have an agent. I have a, a consultant. I have all these things in one person, you know? So definitely, I feel like my, my um, clients will, will definitely get a personalized experience with me. We'll obviously be in touch after that. Um, and then obviously, like, I just, I, I want people to know that I care. Like, I feel like some agents are just very salesy. They're just mm. like, oh, well, you know, the, but it's like, I really want people to know that I care, you yeah. know, because even me, I recently just got my apartment about six months ago and I know the stress that I went through to get it. It's not easy it's renting not, especially in New York, like New Jersey. New York. Yeah. It's not easy. Like I was, I had to have my pay stubs. I had to have this, I have to have my credit, but this, it was so much stress. So it's just like that process. I want to like ease it for the people that I work with, you know? And then if you are interested in working with me as your agent, you can contact me at listed by Ola. So listed L I S T E D by, and then Ola O L A. And like I said, I do everything from, luxury, um, high end, even just people who want to get regular, um, apartments, um, hopefully an investor client that I'll be working with. And I'm actually trying to um, plan a trip to Nigeria, um, where I will be talking to foreign investors who want to invest into real estate in America, um, but just don't know how, yeah. you know? So I'm right now, I'm trying to like, um, compose a guide on how to do like foreign investment, um, in America. So definitely watch out for me. Like I, I, even though I just got in, like, I feel like I have so much to offer and um, definitely an expertise that I don't think has been seen before. Mm. So stay tuned. We're taking over New York City. That's right. <laughs> taking over New And I love that you're saying what you have to offer might not have been seen yet in the city. I think so. So I sure. think that's yes. something that you, of course, at home need to definitely be on the lookout for. Oh, my God. What's your favorite thing about New York City? I know you've ah. been here. You've <laughs> lived in the city and in this, you know, um, in this What's Manhattan. What's my favorite thing about New York? That's a good question. I, well, for me, the number one thing I love is the diversity. That's right. I love that I am around different cultures, you know, Africans, Jews, Indians, Asians, you know, as Hispanic. Like, I feel like I get a taste of the world. Honestly, this really is the melted pot. People don't think it is, but it is. 100%. <laughs> You're going to get every culture, every language. You get everything here. That's number one thing I love about New York. I think the second thing I love about New York, it reminds me of Lagos, you know? Oh, I lived really? in Nigeria for two and a half years, and I really feel like Lagos is like the black New York. So I always feel like anytime I'm in New York or Lagos, it just makes me feel like I'm like in the same place. Because I don't know, like, it's, it's this, because Lagos is very commercial. Lagos is very entertainment. So it's like a lot of the things that you get in Lagos, you're getting here, you know? So it's like, it's a dynamic that I just love. Like, I always see myself being close to a city. Like, even, I mean, when I settle down, I think maybe I'll probably get a house in the suburbs, but I do know that I need to be close to a city area because I, I love, I love, I'm not a city girl. Well, semi. <laughs> But I am a city girl to an extent because, like, I just love being close to a city, close to, like, where things are happening, hustle, bustle. I just, I live for that kind of drive. Yeah. And that's what you get in New York City. For it's sure. The hustle and the bustle. Yeah. But it's also the fashion capital oh, of the world, right? Fashion so is coming It's up. coming up yes, soon. Yes, I'm excited. Um, <laughs> I know you model as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So are we still seeing you on the runway? Are we seeing you on the stage? Yes. Are we... Yes, Shame I that. mean, so hopefully I'm trying to c confirm a couple of things for New York Fashion Week. I mean, I am, because you can't model forever, let's be honest. Like, you kind of have to, even like Tyra, like, she transitioned into like being a mm -hmm. host and stuff. So like, obviously, like, that's why I started real estate, because I'm like, I'm trying to expand my, my whole, I guess, outreach. Um, but definitely, like, you know, you may be seeing me on your screen soon. So you may be seeing me in different things. But yeah. um, definitely, modeling is going to still be a part of my life. But um now, because I'm dealing with like, you know, a lot more bigger clientele, you just have to be speaking the language that I'm, you know, that the I'm speaking, language. the language. If you're speaking the language, then, you know, definitely no more. Because I feel like it's a lot of people don't pay models. And I really like, we have, like, people have to pay their bills. You know, that was another reason why I kind of semi had to reroute because I feel like people just want, well, for exposure. I cannot pay my rent with exposure. Yes. Mm -mm. I cannot pay my cardinal with exposure. You know, I need money. 
so I can pay bills, you know? So it's just, it's just I feel like, especially young girls, I, I, I really do feel for them. I do feel like we need to take models more serious and know that they have families to provide for, children to look after, and, you know, pay them what they're worth. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And I think it's such an important thing that voices like yourself are speaking up about that and Thank for you. that. Um, and, and tying that then with influencing and having a, a social media pr presence and voice, yes. what are you hoping that your social media presence kind of signifies and stands for um, as you kind of, you're dropping as content, <laughs> content. <laughs> so, um, I mean, for me, I think my social media just projects who I am. Like, I don't try to live like somebody, this is who I am. Like you said, I'm unapologetically me. Like, I, I, I think for so long I tried to, like, fit the mold of what people wanted for me, what mm. my family wanted for me, what others want to view me. I was very unhappy, you know? Until I realized that it's my life to live, that's when I finally started feeling like, okay, I'm happy now, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, it sucks sometimes that you may have to cut some people out or, you know, do this growth by yourself or maybe more in a solitude confinement kind of thing but i don't know a millionaire or a successful person that hasn't struggled to get to where they're at yeah. you have to go through a season of really figuring out what you want to get to where you want to be That's you right. know so i feel like with my my um you know platform i would hope that people just get inspired by me um to know to impact and then i feel like definitely the message like if somebody asks me what does your legacy want to be I want my legacy to be knowing your purpose and living your purpose. You know, I feel like it's essential, especially for young people. We need to know why we're on this planet. God has a, 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 a divine, like, you know, purpose for all of us. You know, we're not just here by, yeah. I'm, I'm a Christian, so I speak about my faith. So it's like, I know I'm not just here by being here. I know I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Everything I go through is for a reason. Mm -hmm. Everything I do, I try to find the reason of why I'm doing it. To, to, to kind of continue me onto the next journey. So it's like, definitely, I want people to know, find your purpose in life, find out what makes you happy, find out what skill you have to empower others, you know, and, and, and leave, leave a legacy. You know, every day I live, I want to leave a legacy. When I start having children, I want my kids to be like, that's my mom. I'm so proud of her. Like, you know, continuing what grandma started, she's going, I got to continue that. That's how you get the ripple effect going, you know. And that's how we that's how we bring change into yes. the world. That's how and I and again I am so excited for for having people like yourself on the social media streets that are being positively impactful. Thank you. Right? And not just it's not just about yeah. you know, all of that, but at the same time you get to inspire us with fashion yes. and show yes. us, you yes. know, what's trending. It's balanced. It's balanced. It's balanced. <laughs> like I love me fashion. Like don't get me wrong, I love business, I love God, but I I don't think there's nothing wrong with being a fashionable baddie, you yes. know, like I think, that, <laughs> you know, like you could be a baddie, but you could also be a nice person. You could be a businesswoman, you know, like I love fashion. Like that's, that's just something I yeah. love, but it doesn't define who I am. It's one aspect of me. Pageantry is one aspect of me. Real estate is one aspect, you know? So I feel like there's layers, like you, you're not confined to one space. If you want to do it all, you can do it all. You have one life to live, you know? Mm -hmm. Multifaceted queen, yes. that is who you are. Um, as we wrap things up, yeah. you know, I, I would definitely love for you to share. You also do speaking, and we can we can tell from even this conversation, I can tell mm -hmm. that there's so much passion and fire inside of you, right? And I can imagine on stage how you, how you just glow and radiate when speaking and inspiring others, um, either with your story or with the message. Thank you. What message would you... Do you think this generation needs to hear right from a from a spiritual point of view from a, a mental point of view because those are the two things that are kind of at war with each other right mm -hmm. now right we are seeing a decline of spirituality yes. and a, an incline of mental health so what would you say um to this current generation um about the importance of you know those those two things um yeah. as they come up a lot yeah i mean what you just said speaks volumes spirituality is going down, mental health is going up. You don't see the correlation between yeah. the both. I think, I mean, for me, I can't speak on anybody else. I'll only speak of my experience. If not for God, I literally probably wouldn't be alive. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that, because, like literally I've been through depression, anxiety, um, just times where I wanted to give up, 
you know, time where I did not want to be alive. What keeps me going is God. What keeps me going is I know I have a legacy to complete, you know? So it's like, I, I say this now and I say this all the time. I do not know how people live without God because mm-hmm. I really feel like the times that we live in, it's unimag- unimaginable to live without him, you know, because there's just so much things going on with whether it's war and with social media, with, with, you know, um, the opposite sex, you like, there's so many different aspects that can affect somebody that you need an anchor, yeah. you know, you need an anchor. I'm not here to preach to, to, to anybody who like, you know, maybe is not a Christian. I think whatever faith you believe in, whether it's Christianity, Islam, Jewish, um, you know, Hindu, have an anchor, have a, a moral compass, you know, like definitely for me, I pray. I pray. Like, people don't realize, like, I feel like especially guys, they see me just like, oh, this pretty girl. And then it's like, I'm talking about the afterlife. I'm talking about, you know, spiritual. What's your purpose? They're like, okay, what's going on here? (laughs) So it's like, I feel like, you know, I kind of have like a gotcha kind of thing. But it's like, to be honest, like, the beauty is one aspect. You're a soul. You're a soul. You're a spirit. You know, your spirit lives on. This body goes. This mm. body goes. People don't realize we're here for a, only a, a certain amount of time. What is happening after? Mm. You know, you have to think about that. Like, I know me, I'm young, obviously. I still want to live life. But I also know that I have to complete before my time expires. That's right. You know, so I think if people think like live like that, you would live more conscious. You will make smarter decisions, you know. So I think for sure if any message I could get out there know your purpose, you know, live a purposeful filled life and then have a moral compass, you know, and, and when in times when you're going through things, you focus on this moral compass, get you, to get you back on track so you could continue this journey. Mm, Cause it's, it's, it needs, this journey needs strength. Oh, you need and a lot. And you will not be able to <laughs> find it within you. Yes. You need it from somewhere. Oh, for sure. Um, is there one scripture? Cause I, you know, as we're leaving our, our audiences and saying goodbye, is there a scripture that you'd say you could leave with them that they could go back to read every time they are in a situation where they don't know where to go, or what to do. Um, what's your favorite scripture that you'd say, I will leave this with you guys. Woof. Put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I do love God. <laughs> um, I mean, so I would say the, the common one, which is like John three sixteen. for yeah. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son, whoever believe in him shall never perish, you know? So to me, like, like I said, it goes back to who I am. Like, I do know, like I say, greater is in me. Greater is he who is in me than he who's in the world. When I feel like I have nothing, If I have God, I have everything. Mm. And it's crazy because there's times when, you know, like entrepreneurship is not easy as well. So it's like there's times when I'm down or maybe a client pissed me off and I'm just like, God, I don't know what to do. I'm tired of this. Like God has always made a way. Um, And I'm, and I'm being honest, like times when I'm like, how am I going to get back from this? He's made a way, you know? So I don't think there's an individual scripture that I'm like, okay, this is what you need. I think it's just in all of knowing your purpose in life and and knowing that guy god has you you know mm-hmm. whatever god you believe in god has you and you have to just know that in times of of disparity hold on to that like to me if you have no friends you have no family if you have god you have everything mm-hmm. and i feel like if people can leave with that then my message is happy you know, ah. it's done <laughs> I am happy yes. that you are happy. And Thank I'm you. hoping that you at home are happy as well with this encouraging conversation, with this inspiring conversation, and of course, igniting conversation. And that's yes. what we do right here on the Voyage of Water Show. Beautiful people, beautiful conversations, and of course, sharing with you their journeys and their stories to help you get along on your journey as well. I am Voyage of Water, your darling, and this is... <laughs> so make sure you follow me on Instagram, guys. My name is I am Olutosin, so I am O-L-U-T. OSIN and then my real estate page listed by Ola. I love you guys and thank you for watching. You should be a host. You should, you wanna, I think you I'm going to get into that too, you know? I'm a, no, honestly, I love, I, I don't know, I'm just a media person. I'm yeah. everything. I, I feel like I could do everything in this life. Well, then say goodbye. You, you close off the, the show for us today. <laughs> okay, I'm on my Oprah today. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've been inspired. Make sure you follow her show as well as my page and make sure you tune back in. Have a good night. Yes, for now. <laughs>